Today my goal is, uh, is to help each of us learn how to do this. Make mom's job easier. What? Yeah, Woo! Amen! Your mom's excited. You guys are alive. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Hey, uh, did your mom, or maybe you've done this, uh, his, you probably heard some of these to start with as we got into worship. Did your mom ever give you advice, like momisms? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I heard that. Um, yeah, my mom used to give me advice. There's a couple of things that she would say. you probably heard some of these um, in your own life. Wear clean underwear, because you never know when you're going to get into an accident. Right. What does that even mean, by the way? <laughs> it's so weird. Um, eat everything on your plate, because there's starving kids in the world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, life isn't fair, so just get over it. That's a dad. Uh, mom. Uh, don't swallow your gum and just stay in your stomach for 12 years, or 10, or... That's not true, by the way, but it's still gross. Um... And then the last thing my mom would say, and i got to just be honest and confess something, okay? You ready? Just wait till your father gets home. <laughs> That's not really advice, but uh, actually it kind of was. Like it was, you know, trying to make amends before he got there. Uh, what about this? What, what does your mom say when you scrape your knee? I put this on Facebook yesterday. It was just fun to see kind of some of the responses that came through. These, these are from, like, least... Uh, responded to most responded, okay? So, what does your mom say when you scrape your knee? Uh, some moms say this. Did you get blood on those new pants I just bought you? <laughs> Maybe your mom said this. That was kind of the angry mom. Uh, your mom say this. Oh my goodness, call 911 before you bleed out. Um, yeah, it's kind of a panic. Um, maybe your mom said this. Just rub some dirt in it and it'll be okay. And then just walk it off, right? Your mom might have said this, though. These kind of get a little bit more popular here. Here, let mommy kiss it and hug it. And just, everything will go okay, and you'll just forget what happened. That's, that's sort of the loving mom. And here's, here's kind of a standard response. And this got the most. It looks like you'll be fine. Just put a Band-Aid on it and, and just keep playing. You'll be fine. I was, that was kind of my mom. Um, I want to ask you this. Uh, raise your hand if you're ready to be honest today. Okay. The, the message online is next week. <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, and, and here's, here's the honesty. How many would, you, would, would admit, raise your hand, to having some sort of family disagreement or argument this past week? My hand's up, for sure. Okay. Most of us are in this boat, right? Again, the class online is next week. Um, and uh, here's, here's, here's the thing, though. How do we manage those kind of trying family times? How... How do we manage those times, especially that have to do with the raising of children? Let me ask you this way. What do godly boundaries and discipline look like? And, and what is the place of authority and obedience? We're going to hit like some deep stuff today. Uh, before we read the scripture, I just want to say Pastor Ben's here. He'll be here in a little bit too. Um, he had surgery this past week. that made a, didn't really make a big deal about it. But uh, um, he uh, had some surgery on his ear. So uh, I, I offered to... Uh, to to help him not preach today. I mean, um, um, <laughs> I didn't tell him it was bad or anything, but it is, it's good to share and, and, and help out. But I want you to hear this. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 4. You're going to be up on our screen here. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Oh, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. We hear these words like obedience and honor and discipline and instruction. I think most of us kind of tune out what comes next. We, we sort of think, hey, I got this figured out. I know what these things are. I, I get it. I understand. Most of us kind of think that. We got it. We got it figured out. And yet, most of us continue to express anger, frustration, and fear over raising kids. I told you, you got to be honest today. I, I want to talk a little bit about boundaries this morning and a little bit about discipline. Uh, if, in the youth ministry right now, we're, we're going through a series called Garden. And the series is all about setting personal boundaries for ourselves. So, quick, uh, quick poll from our youth that are paying attention. <coughs> two things that a, uh, a wall says, right? Two functions, two jobs. What are they? Keep people in, keep people out. Okay. Keep, keep what's on the inside inside and keep what's on the outside outside, right? Makes sense, duh. Um, 
that's what a, a boundary, a fence, a wall does. What's on the inside stays inside, what's on the outside stays outside. And we're kind of saying two things about that. See, we're saying what's on the inside matters. It's important. I care about it. It has value. I, I want to take care of it, right? What's on the outside is dangerous. It's, it's uh, risky and it's potentially harmful. And so we say both of those things when it comes to boundaries or walls. And we want to keep what's on the inside inside, what's on the outside outside. You know, God set very clear boundaries for us. And it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. God set boundaries within the first couple of chapters of, of, the, of the book of Genesis. And actually, even before he gave the boundaries to humankind, he gave boundaries to the world, right? That's literally his job. The first chapter of Genesis is separating and creating division, boundaries. It's a really cool thing if you think about it like that. And God's boundaries clearly define what's inside and what's supposed to be outside. When it comes to boundary setting, we, we got to remember that kids ultimately are going to try to jump whatever fence we set up. Right? Any amens? <laughs> right? Kids are ultimately going to try to disobey. They're going to push the boundary. You did it too. And it will keep happening. This is, this is the nature of being human. This is what it means to be sinful beings as we push. We try to get away with this as much as we can get away with. Right? Here's the kind of thing I want you to think about. Think about a boundary. Think about rules or walls, like like setting up a fence around a tar pit, a tar pit, okay? So we we say what's, uh, you know, the tar pit's dangerous. It's uh, not only can it potentially hurt yourself, if, if you get, you know, caught in the middle of it, you could die. It's that critical. It's that important. So as parents, we set, we set boundaries. We set a, a fence up around that tar pit, and we say, don't go there. Don't cross this. Don't go into it. Don't try to jump the fence. It's painful, it will hurt you, and it may even end your life. Okay? We may even do like really creative things like get a sample of the tar and kind of bring it home and go, you see how sticky it is? You see, what, imagine what if that got all over you? What if you got caught in the middle of that? And we sort of do things like that, and we talk about how bad and how dangerous and how awful the tar pit. We might even tell a story about you know a friend or someone else that got caught in the middle of this and what that was like to try to teach the kids, don't do this thing, okay? This is what we do when it comes to discipline or, or, or boundary setting. But here's the problem. When we focus too much on the red button, the kids are going to press the red button. Right? You just thought about a red button right when I said that, didn't you? Okay? When we focus too much on not doing something, the only thing that we want to do is that thing that we said we cannot do. That is, that is inevitable. And when we put that thought into our mind and when we reinforce that thought, we reinforce the negative and how bad the negative is and why we shouldn't do that. It continues to kind of feed and fuel and grow that thought. Here's something we should try to do instead. Instead of focusing so hard on that negative and the bad consequences that come from that, talk about the freedom that comes outside or inside of the boundary, outside of the danger, inside of the boundary. Focus on what we can do and what, what's great and what's awesome about this wide open space that we have way before the boundary. Okay? Focus on the positive and the, and the great things instead of just the negative. And the other part of it is the inevitability that kids are going to jump the fence. Set the fence where it's not so close to the tar pit that when they jump it, they don't land in the tar pit. That makes sense? Like set the boundary further out from the tar pit itself. And maybe have several layers of boundaries going into it, right? So when they jump that fence, they don't die. Literally. So when it comes to boundary setting or rule making, that sort of thing, make some room in there. Make some room where it's, it's far enough back where we don't focus so much on that negative thing. And when they do jump the fence, they're not, they're not gone. Literally. So boundary setting. Focusing on the no instead of the yes kind of makes the, the, the thing that's not really the main thing, it kind of brings it to the forefront. Clear boundaries that create safety, right? Clear boundaries that create some sort of safety. They help kids flourish inside of those boundaries. They ultimately also create the need for what? Discipline, right? Discipline. Great. We're going to talk about it. Just go ahead. I just want to encourage you to get those preconceived notions out of your head as much as possible. And, and, and we're going to see what God says about discipline. And hopefully there will be something really amazing that comes out of this that God will speak to us. And hear these things, though. That discipline is more than spanking. It's instruction. Discipline is more than correction. It's training. Discipline is more than punishment. It teaches choices for the future. And ultimately this, bottom line. 
Discipline's more than behavior modification. It's about heart transformation. More than behavior modification, it's heart transformation. Let's keep being honest today. Dads, I just want to talk to you for a minute. It's not your day, but I want to talk to you because uh, it's in this scripture. How many of all of us, how many of, not just dads, but how many of you have seen the movie Inside Out? Inside Out. Goo goo. It's good stuff. We watch it like once a day. Um, it's kind of our movie right now. Uh, Bad Moana. Um, but Inside Out uh, is a really kind of a deep movie, if you think about it. It's, I love it. So inside of everyone's mind is the kind of premise of the movie. Inside of everyone's mind, it's a cartoon, are five emotions that kind of, go, that kind of uh, direct and are at the helm of our life. So there's, there's joy, there's fear, there's sadness, there's anger, and there's disgust in every one of our minds, in every one of our, uh, our decision-making. These five emotions, these five characters play some sort of a role. Okay, for the girl that's in there, uh, the main one that's at the helm is joy. And so she experiences joy. It's kind of her dominant emotion. Uh, there's, I'm not going to give it away or ruin it for you. It's a good movie. But at this one point where she makes a really bad choice, and um, uh, she's going through some stuff, the, the girl is, and she's sitting down at, at dinner with mom and dad. And we get kind of a picture into mom's mind and dad's mind, too. Okay? So uh, mom's, like, talking to the daughter. Hey, what's going on? Tell me about school. What's going on in your life? Dad is checked out, not paying attention at all. He's eating. He's actually watching the game, like, in his mind, the big game. In his mind. And so, mom, uh, there's this moment where uh, her emotions say, signal the husband. And so, she goes, ah, <clears throat> um, And so, we see this picture of dad, and who's at the helm for dad? Remember? Anger. Anger's at the helm for dad. And for too many of us, for too many men, for too many dads, anger is that thing that's in control. It's so important that that scripture we read earlier in Ephesians, Paul says, Dads, be careful when you're angry. It really can mess up your business. <laughs> right? I mean, that's a quick paraphrase, but that's, that's what he says. Uh, it is so important that he comes back to it again in another letter. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 says this. Fathers, dads, don't provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. So I want to say, dads, be careful not to provoke your kids. And moms, you're not off the hook either. Okay? Moms, don't nag your kids. <laughs> don't say things like, I've told you a thousand times. It just doesn't work. It's not effective. It doesn't communicate what you want to communicate in the midst of it. And ultimately, it just brings discouragement. I'm a failure. She's told me a thousand times. I am horrible. I must be terrible. Discipline, though, has got to be instructive. And ultimately, it's got to be transformative. It's got to cause change. If you're being honest with me, how many of you love discipline? Is anybody brave enough? We had one person earlier. How many of you love discipline? Okay, we got another one. Couple. Okay, so you love discipline, right? You love setting the boundaries, setting the rules, and then, and then maybe the punishment will back in, if you're honest. Um, how many of you, this is a different question, how many of you actually like being disciplined yourself? None of us, right? Any of us that would admit that? It's not fun. It, it, it's not an easy thing. These are kind of different questions, different answers for us. I want to bring us all back in. It's a day about my mom's quiz. We're all in this. Um, regardless of whether you have kids or not, whether you have multiple kids or you don't have any, regardless if you're single or an uh, empty nester or maybe divorced, widowed, separated, whatever, wherever you're at in this, all of us probably needs discipline. Every one of us needs discipline. And this sort of discipline that I'm talking about, does it come from a person? It doesn't come from people in front of us. If you're paying attention, you probably get this, that, that God brings discipline in our lives. God brings discipline when we need it. So I want to ask this question again. What do godly boundaries and discipline look like? And what is the place of authority and obedience? And I want to say this. Remember that discipline moves beyond behavior modification and journeys into the land of heart transformation. Okay. Well, let's consider how God disciplines through these verses in Hebrews. Read along with me. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. It says, My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. 
God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But He, God, disciplines us for our good that we may share His... Say it. Holiness. Oh, holiness. Oh my goodness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. Amen. Hallelujah. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Wow. If there's ever a scripture about discipline and, and how it works in, in, in obedience and boundaries, it's this. It's, it's so incredibly powerful. The discipline of the Lord, let's just go back, should not be dismissed or disregarded or ignored. Don't give up when you're being corrected by God. God disciplines only because He what? Loves. loves. God disciplines because He loves. If God didn't love us, God wouldn't discipline us. Wow. God's relationship with us requires respect and obedience. This kind of respect and obedience is it's higher than the respect and the obedience that we give to our earthly parents. It, we respect God's authority because God is God. Because God is God. Like subjects who are under the king, we are under God's rule and reign. God disciplines us that we should share in God's, I made you say it, God's holiness. Powerful thought there. God disciplines us that we would be made holy. It's for holiness that we're corrected, reproved, taught, and trained. So the fruit of righteousness, the fruit that comes through God's discipline, it only comes through that, 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 that training. Righteousness, holiness only comes through God's discipline. And since through this discipline we're being, being made holy, it's ultimately through this discipline that we're being made righteous before God. God's discipline proves God's love for us. God would not discipline us if He didn't love us. Illegitimate children, even. Wow. Powerful, very strong words there. But very important truth for us. So those that don't show proof or the fruit of holiness and righteousness are ultimately those that have not Submitted to God's discipline and God's respect and God's authority in their life. Ouch. A righteous person is a disciplined person. A holy person is a loved person by God. Someone that's responded to God's reproof. Last week we considered the connection between the family and the home. And I kind of gave you this. that that's, um, There's this idea that we both have two gardens that we grow from. First of all, we grow from the family garden, the, that primary garden that God places us in as uh, brand new seeds. And then we also grow in this other garden of the church. Um, these gardens are not the same. They're different, but they're supportive. They work in harmony together and in concert together. And I want you to keep these truths in mind as we go back and look at that and bring it forward to today. And consider that family discipline, this idea of discipline in this context of making families work. That's what we've been talking about. Families work. Here we go. These things. Parents are the means through which God disciplines children. God, God disciplines primarily through the family, through the parents. Godly discipline is a, far, a fight for the hearts of the children. It's a fight for the hearts of the next generation. Behind every behavioral sin is a, is a self-centered desire that needs to be corrected and replaced with a love for Jesus Christ. Disciplining with respect teaches children how they should respect others later in life. And lastly, godly discipline is an act of love. It is. As you and I go about making mom's job a little bit easier today, let's be especially respectful and appreciative of all that our moms have done. If your mom's alive and you can contact her if you didn't see her today, call her. Do this. Thank her for disciplining you. Thank you for, for helping you and guiding you when you needed it, right? What an incredible thing to say to mom. Hey, you know that time? I deserve that. And it made me better. That's the, the, the primary thing that, that we're supposed to be doing anyhow. And so thank mom for that. 
Uh, if your mom's not here anymore, thank God for that witness that she has and continue to live your life in a way that honors her. If you don't have a great relationship with your mom or if it was strained or, or even if she's passed and it was difficult, cling to God. Turn to God to be your heavenly mother. I don't want to say that. There's nothing specific about God that only makes God father. God is mother just as much to us. Like, like, a, like a hen that takes care of the chicks, the Bible says. God's love for us is like that. Like, like the brooding and, 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 and protecting that. That's God's love, incredible love for us. And there's a bigger message for all of us this Mother's Day. And it's a message for all of us. Regardless of us being moms or having great relationships with moms or not. And it's this, that the model, capital the model, right? The model for boundaries and discipline when it comes to how we should be raising our kids, what kind of boundaries, what kind of discipline we should have for our kids comes from God's model of how God disciplines and God sets boundaries for us. God calls us his sons and daughters. God is our heavenly father, mother, in the midst of that. And so when we, when we get how God disciplines us, we get how we should discipline our kids and what kind of boundaries we should set. Okay? Maybe you're actually being disciplined by God today. Maybe as you have this relationship with God, know that it comes from God's incredible love for you. I want to ask you this. Have you ever stopped to consider that it's possible that the reason that you're being disciplined is so that you would be made holy? That God would test you and reprove you to make you more like Jesus? That is ultimately what that scripture says in Hebrews. So this gentle correction and instruction is God's way of forming you into the image of Jesus. The quicker we submit to that authority, the quicker we get what God's trying to teach us, the, the more, uh, the faster, the quicker we get made into the image of Jesus. And that's ultimately what that discipline does. It makes us one in the same image with Jesus. Think about that today as, as we consider how to make mom's job easier. Consider that relationship that God has with us, that incredible love that God gives to every one of us. And as we submit to God's authority, as we obey what God would have for us and respect those boundaries that God sets up for us. Let's pray as we close today. God, thank you again for all that you do. Thank you for this day, your amazing, incredible love for all of us. God, thank you that you are our heavenly Father, our heavenly Mother. God, that you guide, guard, and direct each and every one of us, God, that ultimately that relationship is based in love. And even if we're right in the middle of being disciplined by you, being corrected by you, we know that it's because you care for us. Because you want us to be made more like Jesus and, and more transformed by your love and your grace. So God, help us to surrender to that today. As we honor our moms here on earth, thank you for that relationship you have for us. That relationship you freely give to each of us as sons and daughters of God. In Jesus' name we pray all these things today. Amen.